The City in the Sea by Edgar Allan Poe Structure Summary Analysis Hello and welcome to the discourse The City in the Sea was a poem written by Edgar Allan Poe that was published in its final form in 1845 Poe began writing the poem in 1830 and it was first published under the title The Doomed City in 1831 Poe revised the poem and published it again in 1841 with the new title The City of Sin. In 1845 the poem was republished in its final form under the title The City in the Sea. It is a gothic poem of the genre of dark romanticism that talks about a fictional city ruled by death personified. The theme of the poem is isolation and decadence. The poem is allegoric in nature depicting the death of the human soul which results from sin. The poem depicts how opulence results in sin and corruption which results in the descent of the soul. In the beginning, Poe describes the city as a unique place with glorious surroundings in a serene manner as if it is the most praised and proud construction of nature. As the poem proceeds the tone of the poem becomes horrific declaring that we are always under the attention of death the poet sympathizes with the dead that even their wealth could not save them from destruction and how their life got wasted running for the chase after prosperity while the end is the same for both the rich and the poor structure of the city in the sea the poem consists of 54 lines set in five stanzas The first, second, fourth and fifth stanza consists of 12 lines each while the third stanza contains 6 lines. The poem follows a rhyming scheme of A A B B C C but the pattern changes in a few instances. Poe wrote the poem in iambic tetrameter and deliberately chose chose archaic old fashioned words in the poem to make it more poetic and impressive. Po has used personification anaphora alliteration cicera and metaphor summary of the city in the sea stanza 1 lo death has reared himself a throne in a strange city lying alone far down within the dim west where the good and the bad and the worst and the best have gone to their eternal rest their shrines and palaces and towers time eaten towers and tremble not resemble nothing that is ours around by lifting winds forgot resignedly beneath the sky the melancholy waters lie the poet begins with the personification of death depicting it as a stately king who has reared himself a throne death has an independent will and he rules over a strange city that is unique isolated and detached the city of death is situated far down within the dim west which suggests the descent of life with the setting of the sun The sun is sinking in the west and death is presented as the monarch of the silent city which lies near the sea. Poe describes the city as a place where the good and the bad and the worst and the best find their eternal rest. It is the afterlife located in the west where even the light of the sun fails as it sinks into the sea. In the fifth line Poe uses accumulation using a list of words having similar meanings shrines palaces towers. Poe then describes the difference between our living world and this gloomy city under the sea where the shrines and palaces and towers are time eaten they are very old and dilapidated but they are strong enough not to tremble or fall as if they are immortally frozen as they are the tone of the poem changes in the last line of the stanza as the poet describes the sea as melancholy waters stanza 2 No rays from the holy heaven come down on the long night time of that town but light from out the lurid sea streams up the turrets silently gleams up the pinnacles far and free up domes up spires up kingly halls up fanes up babylon like walls up shadowy long forgotten bowers of sculpted ivy and stone flowers up many and many a marvelous shrine whose fretted phrases intertwine the wild the violet and the vine po makes ample use of alliteration in this stanza holy heaven in the 13th line the wild the violet and the vine in the 24th line in addition he uses up in the lines 18 19 20 and 21 augmenting the poem with anaphora in addition po also used cicera breaking a line between words 
The poet continues to describe the city in the sea and explains how vast it is, the light that strikes it and what kind of sights one might see there. The poet describes how despite its size that no rays or light goodness from holy heaven make it to the city. It is perpetually in the night, obscured from the warmth of heaven, but the light of another kind strikes the city in the sea. This light is not coming directly from the sun, but from the lurid sea and touches the tur turrets silently. Poe uses accumulation again while describing how this gloomy light spreads throughout the city far and wide as it falls on the domes, spires and kingly halls of the city. Despite all gloominess, the city has some marvelous shrines, but it is the city of death and hence nothing lively is there. There are beautiful ivy and stone flowers, the sculptured vines and violet flowers can intertwine with the music of the viol. Thus, the poet describes the beauty of the city with brilliant ivy and stone flowers and fluent music of viol, but nothing is lively. Stanza 3 Resignedly beneath the sky the melancholy waters lie, so blend the turrets and shadows there that all seem pendulous in air, while from a proud tower in the town death looks gigantically down. The third stanza is six lines long and it describes the sea, the melancholy waters. The sea is calm and the melancholy waters calmly accept anything unpleasant or difficult without any protest or resistance. The sea is thoroughly defeated and it stands still resignedly beneath the sky. The melancholy waters don't fight against their lot in life, nor do those in the city itself. Everything is blended into shadows in this place. The waters seem perfectly in harmony with the air as if in to and fro motion. There are many tall towers, but the tallest in the one is the one owned by death. He looks down gigantically from his proud tower in the town. Everything else is a minion against his stature. Stanza 4 There open fanes and gaping graves yawn level with the luminous waves, but not the riches there that lie in each idol's diamond eye. Not the gaily jeweled dead tempt the waters from their bed, for no ripple curl, alas, along that wilderness of glass, no swelling stell that winds may be upon some far off happier sea, no heavings hint that winds have been on seas less hideously serene. The poet then describes the opulence of the temples or churches open fanes and gaping graves alliteration that have been left open and unattended. The churches and the graves have been labelled by the waves, but their richness is still intact. There are many grandiose idols decorated with diamonds and jewels. Anyone could step into them and loot what's inside, but no one does. The riches there that lie do not tempt the waters from their bed. The poet alludes to the sins, corruption and frauds that human beings indulge in to collect immense wealth, but at the time of death, all this opulence, all this wealth appears useless. The melancholy waters could easily engulf the place, but it doesn't, it remains still. Poe uses metaphor and compares the sea surface to an unstable glass along that wilderness of glass, line 37. Some onlookers may wonder if there are some strong winds on some far off happier sea that may come to the city shortly, but that is not the case. Everything is calm in this world and there are no heavings or strong winds anywhere that may offer a hint of any change of happiness anywhere. Stanza 5 But lo, a stir is in the air, the wave, there is a movement there, as if the towers had thrust aside in slightly sinking the dull tide, as if their tops and had feebly given a void within the filmy heaven. The waves have now a redder glow, the hours are breathing faint and low, and when amid no earthly moans, down, down, that town shall settle hence, hell rising from the thousand thrones shall do it reverence. While any movement is unexpected, in such a calm and serene place, a sudden still ruffles the air and there is a wave, a movement in otherwise all still waters. The scene completely changes as it is no longer hideously serene as it had been. The water begins to grow and glow and the high towers appear to shift as if giving space to the water. The towers begin slightly sinking in the tides and the poet uses alliteration again. The violet light changes its color and now the whole city is engulfed in a much redder glow, as if it is receding down. 
The poet then personifies time as the hours are breathing faint and low. The ground begins it to shift, but there is no earthly moon. It doesn't appear the same world, the same earth. The city begins to sink down, down, to settle under the sea. The poet says that the city of death in the sea is much worse than hell itself, and thus death's city shall be held in reverence by hell. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of American English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.